Today I'm analyzing the James Bond roulette system and I'll be giving it a true score rating at the end of this video. That way you'll know if this system is right for you. My name is Matt and I can predict how you'll do at the casino. I programmed 100,000 bots to test this system and we're going to see all kinds of data today. The experiment we're running is pretty simple. $140 on the high numbers, $50 on the double street that's 13 to 18 and another $10 on the single zero. That's $200 per spin, and the bots are going to play for 30 consecutive spins. How often and how much are they going to win? Let's find out. Here is the simulation report. There's 40 pages of data here, so we can't cover everything in this video. But if you do want to go deeper, you can read this report at thinktank.dicedata.info. We'll start off by looking at the simulation parameters. I ran all three wheel types, 100,000 bots each. Each bot did 30 spins per session, so we had 3 million spins for each wheel type in the data set. Looking at the house edge, total wagered $600 million across the board. You can see the amount won lost in the house take and the effective house edges that we saw. That's going to be moderate on the single zero elevated on the double zero and substantial on the triple zero. We're going to see that throughout the report, how much more expensive the double and triple zero are over the single zero wheel. How often did our bots win after those 30 spins? Look at this single zero, 42.5% of the bots won money after those spins. That drops to 34 and 27.9% on the double and triple zero wheels. There are a few pushes where they neither won or lost any money. Pretty small percent, but it did happen. And you can see, of course, the rest were losers. They didn't win any money after those 30 spins. But what's more important than how often they lost is how much they lost. And here you can see the typical win. That was $160 lost on the single zero wheel. Now, what typical means is that half the bots came in higher than that and half the bots came in lower than that. So it's the median right in the middle of the distribution. The middle 50%, so this is the middle 50% of the bots, 25% on either side. The lucky bots on the single zero won $340, unlucky lost 620. If we expand that middle section out to cover the middle 90%, so we're kind of chopping off 5% on either end, that was $1,000 for the very lucky bots, $1,420 for the unlucky bots. And the absolute most that any bot won after those 30 rolls was $2,600. Most lost was about $3,460. Here is the actual distribution of those outcomes. You can see it's a fairly nice bell curve. It's gonna be shifted a little bit over towards the losses, and that's more pronounced as you add zeros to the wheel. What I'd like you to take away from this chart though is that the tail is just a little bit longer on the losing side than it is on the winning side. So how can we rate that information? Well, if we look at the win frequency, the shape that was relatively balanced, right? It was a relatively nice bell curve. So we're balanced here. And then our losses are larger. They're rare, but they are larger. So we're in here. And what that means is that we're gonna get three stars for those. We have a balanced frequency, but slightly larger losses than wins. The strategy risk profile gives us a visualization of how often the bots won as compared to the average payout. And of course, we all wanna be in the sweet spot, right? Where we win very often and we win a lot of money. Well, that's not really what the casino is gonna do. Um, but instead, what we're having here is that these bots kind of fall down here. They're winning a less, less frequently, and they're winning anywhere from half to uh, close to one times their money back. Here are some of the session trajectories that the bots actually experienced. So look at this. This is the average bot, 98,098. Um, this bot ended up just, let me zoom in here, actually. This bot ended up exactly on that trend line, on the expected value line, given the house edge. And you can see they went up a little bit, lost a little bit, and ended up exactly where they expected to. So I told you that the bots were going to play for 30 consecutive spins. So how much money did they actually need out of their own pocket to be able to last that long? Well, the typical amount that they needed for the single zero was $700. That increased to $900 on the triple zero wheel. The middle 50%, if they were lucky, they only needed $400. And if they were unlucky, they needed up to $1,100. 
the middle 90% range that went from $200 up to pushing $2,000 in some cases, 1740 on the single zero up to 2020 on the triple zero. And the absolute minimum that any bots needed was $200. Those bots, all they had to do was make those first bets. They started winning money and they never had to take any more money out of their own pocket for their entire session of 30 spins. The maximum, though, those are the unluckiest bots. These are the unluckiest out of 100,000 on, on the single zero needed $3,740 $3, to be able to play this strategy. So that's quite a lot considering that they're $200 bets over just 30 spins. Here's the same information in distribution form. You can see about 15%, that might be a little small, about 15% needed the just the $200 and it falls off pretty quickly. You can see the bulk right up here about $2,000. And these are those really long tails um, that uh, created that huge amount. This is that one outlier bot on the double zero wheel that needed, what did they need? They needed um, that $4,560 to be able to play the strategy. These bots are dumb. They don't have any win goals or anything like that. This is just to discover what might happen if you play this strategy wrote after a certain number of spins. Now, return on outlay. So how much did the bots actually win given their outlay? Well, 23% on the single zero were able to double their money. That went up to almost 14% uh, tripled their money. 8.9% um, four times their money, and even two out of a thousand were able to 10 times their money. So whatever they outlaid, they were able to return 10 times that amount. Now, some people really like to be at the table for a long time, and this is the section that gives that information. So for every $100 that the bots outlaid, they made almost $750 in total bets. The more money that they're making in total bets for any amount of outlay means that they're going to be able to play longer because they're recycling their money. That recycled buddy can mean to more comps or more time at the table, more free drinks, all of that kind of stuff. So this counts as an extended session. We have seen some that are higher than this, um, but not too bad. $100 turns into $750 in total bets. Here's the rating on volatility. So what this is saying is that uh, the volatility is mild. It's 68% of the total bet. So 68% of that $200 per spin. And that's really steady action with manageable swings. Profit retention is one of my favorite parts of the report. Uh, this is telling us that the bots were, that were always profitable, about 9.6%. So what happened there is that they won money right up front, and they just kept winning money. They never fell below zero. That, of course, drops to 5% on the triple zero wheel. Uh, bots that were always down, about 10% up to 15%. These are the bots that lost money up front and never recovered. They just stayed down the entire time. All the rest of the bots had some kind of recovery, or they gave back their winnings. So about a third of them were recovered. So what happens there is that they started up and they actually lost money, and then they were able to recover it before the end of their session. 45%, up to 55% gave back money. So at some point they were getting up, and then they ended up giving back their money and losing in a negative territory. And a small percent were mixed where they kind of went back and forth, up and down, and uh, straddled that zero line. You can see here what the actual recovery swing looks like. So just looking at the numbers first, typical recovery was, you know, $260, $280. If they were lucky, they recovered $420. Unlucky or very lucky, they recovered uh, $700. And the absolute most that any of them recovered was up to $1,400. We can see that bot here. This is bot 20 nine thousand nine hundred thirty four look at how bad they were doing way down here um, almost to fifteen hundred dollars lost and then just had some great sessions and were able to recover now remember this is one bot out of a hundred thousand so this isn't typical results typical is more like a 280 um dollar recovery but this is uh, the extreme and i think it's really interesting to imagine what that bot must have felt like when it was experiencing all of that um, on the other side, profit given back, typical $200, $240. Um, if they're lucky, they only gave back $140. If they were very lucky, only $80. But the unlucky bots, man, $680. The absolute most that any bot gave back was about $1,340. Of course, we can see that. 
This is bought 86,444. Look at this like beautiful run right up. They had a couple, you know, uh, sessions and kind of peak there and then just plummeted right here, right back to a small loss. Again, one out of 100,000 is absolute worst out of 100 thousand bots so what if we had the bots and play the strategy over multiple casino visits well we saw already after one visit 42 and a half percent are going to be up on that single zero wheel if they go back and they go 10 times that drops to 25 percent um then 17 6.6 6, 6 uh 1.6 and then after 200 visits, just one out of a thousand is going to be in profit. And that's really just that house edge that's just eating away after all of these return visits. Now, this is just how often they are in profit. But of course, what we care about is how much money they're in profit. This is the chart there. So the blue line, that's the middle 90%. But you can see here that there's actually some bots that were able to stay in profit. Um, over those multiple casino visits. And we can see how much they were actually making on this chart. After one visit, the absolute best bot was 2,600, on the worst side. This climbs, right? After 10 visits, the best was doing 8580. And that goes to a peak of uh, $20,000 after 100 visits. So remember, this is one out of 100,000 bots. And then that absolute best bot had to be the best out of 100,000 100 times. So it's a pretty rare occurrence. Um, the You can see even the very lucky, this is the 95th percentile, was a loss of $3,620. So again, very, very rare, but there are bots that were able to do it. But after 500 visits, that house is going to win. They're going to get their money. So $1,640 lost after 500 visits. So no bots were able to survive the house edge after that long. The last thing I have for you is the true score analysis. So house edge, three stars. That's a moderate house edge. We're on the single zero wheel, of course. Profit and loss balance is three stars, and that's because it has a balance frequency, but it has larger losses, as we saw. That tail is a little bit longer on the losing side. Volatility is mild, four stars there. Jackpot factor is limited, so there are some good wins, but it's really hard to make a lot of money given this strategy. Probably, probably because we're not doing any kind of pressing strategy with our wins. And the betting power extended. So we saw that earlier. Extended betting power, how much how long are you able to play given your outlay? This does best when it comes to player ratings for the comp grinder, got five stars, mainly because of the profit and loss balance where it's winning, you know, it's winning as often as it's losing, and because the betting power is pretty long and the volatility is low. Paycheck player is uh, the second one. And uh, it's really not good for the entertainment seeker or the jackpot hunter. Those aren't, this is not the strategy for you guys. Bankroll requirements. $1,100 is usually sufficient. $1,740 is nearly always sufficient if you want to play this strategy the way that it's here over 30 spins. And if we go up to the double zero, only thing really changes on, on that is the house edge becomes elevated. Uh, so we start to lose some stars there. Um, 1880 is the nearly always sufficient number here. And then when we get up to triple zero, house edge becomes substantial and everybody pretty much loses a star there. $2,020 is what's necessary if you want to play this over 30 spins over a triple zero wheel. I hope that you found this interesting. If you have a strategy that you would like me to simulate, please leave it in the comments below or go to dicedata.info and you can submit your strategy right there and I'll get right to it. Thanks for watching and good luck at the tables.